There we go. Helps not being on mute. Uh, good evening. Um, I am John Spriggs, sometimes known as John the Nice Guy. Uh, and I last had a stream on here where I was showing people around the Vagrant file and some of the Ansible things that I'm doing for log.org.uk. Uh, so I mentioned last time that log.org.uk is a, oh, let me just turn the volume down on this. Uh, so yes, it's a um, not-for-profit organization. In fact, it's uh, entirely volunteer run. Um, that is designed to basically provide log services, uh, sorry, Linux user group services um, to people that run Linux user groups. So it's things like hosting for web servers, uh, it's mailing lists, um, DNS services if people want to run their own stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, something I'm involved in. Um, one of the things that we came across uh, probably in the last three or four months uh, was that we were having a few DNS issues. Uh, nothing major, nothing critical, uh, but what we had to do quite quickly was recover our DNS um, bind configuration file. Uh, and bind basically is um, a DNS service. So when you ask for, you know, www.example.org, uh, your machine asks its DNS resolver and the DNS resolver knows about a thing called the root DNS servers. Uh, so the DNS um, resolver and local to you, so that's either your router or your ISP or something like that, that will ask the root servers uh, for some details on um, who the, uh, who the um, what example.org lives. Example.org then, um, sorry, the root servers then say, oh, the name server for .org is over here. So then you go to .org servers and the .org server says, okay, for example.org, you go over there. Then you go to that server and that server says, ah, example.org is over here. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, so we created, oh, sorry, I've inherited uh, about seven or eight years ago, um, co-maintainership of log.org.uk. Uh, effectively it's a very organically grown box and system um, and we've never really applied any automation or orchestration to it. Uh, my day job is mostly about Ansible and um, automation with Terraform and stuff like that. Um, so what I did was actually um, created a, an Ansible playbook uh, to do things like um, create the various init scripts and stuff, not init scripts, the, the bind config files. Um, and that is what this lot is in your window up here. Uh, now, I am currently running a thing called Vagrant here, which is a virtual machine provisioner. Uh, in a window over there, which you can't see, I'm watching what the CPU load is. Um, and it seems to be doing okay at the moment. So if we start dropping packets or anything like that, uh, just let me know uh, in the chat uh, and because uh, last time when I played this back I had a couple of issues where it, um, I got cut off part way through the stream so shouldn't be a problem I'm recording locally uh, and uh, I would welcome anyone uh, if there's anyone that wants to um, sort of chat along in the background and tell me that you know I'm doing everything wrong or anything like that please 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 do so um, right just tried to open a browser because I can't currently see if we've got anyone in the audience that's listening. I don't think there is, but never mind. Not a problem. Uh, I have uh, details at the bottom there, so if you come up, stumble across this, uh, you know, late one night, early one morning, something like that, and you want to go, oh, I wonder what this thing was that this madman was waffling on about, and you suddenly realise that I'm doing everything really badly wrong, please, please, please do get in touch. Uh, right, let me just get into Twitch over there so I can see what's going on. Uh, you can definitely tell I'm running a virtual machine. So uh, one of the things I'd hoped to do 
uh, and had failed rather badly at night, uh, is actually getting a cloud virtual machine stood up with this. Uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the script that I had that did um, Ubuntu um, 18.04, I've upgraded it to do with the work with Ubuntu 20.04, and it's broken it so i need to sit down and figure that one out at some point but it's not a disaster again there's, there's no disasters in this lot um this is largely me going through and um making sure that uh, if there is anyone that's watching great uh, it's about making sure that uh, what i'm producing not necessarily that it matches what log.org.uk has uh and i might write a script just to do some um, A-B testing between the actual live server and this virtual machine that I've got to see if they both return the same sort of um, results from DNS. Uh, and also, why is that thing taking so long to load? Why is this thing taking so long to build, to be honest? Um, yeah, there we go. That's much better. Um, so yeah, so I'll probably run some A-B tests between the two nodes just to make sure that I know what's going on between them. Um, and then hopefully this is kind of the basis for kind of how I'm going to start developing the automation and orchestration of the stuff that we're moving towards. Uh, you are live. Yes, I know I'm live. Manage stream. That's what I want to do. Um, those of you who know me know that normally I would be running um, Linux. Uh, I have done a blog post recently uh, that effectively says uh, I'm not doing Linux on this machine because this machine is a tablet. Uh, and the keyboard detection stuff for uh, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, they're all a bit pants, unfortunately, at the moment. I'm still waiting for something to come out that actually fixes the issues that I've got. Again, it's not a disaster. I keep saying that, but uh, yeah, it's not a disaster. So I'm not, I'm not hugely fussed if we can't, if we can't find something with it. But um, you know, if if I can get something going, then great. Bum, bum, bum. Doesn't look like I have anyone watching me at the moment. Oh, that's fine. Right. Okie dokie. So, um, what is happening at the moment? Well, that's a good question. So, up at the top here, let me drag this down a bit and pop that over to the side. Excellent. Right. Okay. So, up at the top here, um, I went through this lot all last time. Uh, but I didn't actually have Vagrant running last time, so um, is this is the base box that I'm using. Uh, I'm using the Contrib Buster 64 image, not the uh, Buster 64 image, because the Contrib one's got the um, VirtualBox disk um, additions added to it, uh, which makes running some of these scripts a bit helpful. Uh, I have a boot timeout set to zero so it doesn't wait for it to boot that's good i'm not checking to see if there's a more recent box image because i'm doing apps updates and all those sorts of fun things in a bit uh, i've commented out the bit that gives me more memory because that's only really for when i'm actually on a cloud somewhere um this part here tries to reduce some of the caching uh, and in fact hopefully what i sh should have found was when we did this basically said oh, don't need to go and get these files because they will exist which is nice oh no it's still had to get those ones no one not too much of a problem um so that caching's not worked but that's not a problem um and then we have this here so by default the vagrant boxes come with a vagrant user uh, which gets a set of credentials installed into it. Uh, sorry, uh, an SSH key installed into it. Um, as I expand this out, 
uh, I want to use the root account for the Ansible connections. Um, so this is why I'm copying the keys that are in Vagrant SSH uh, into root SSH and then setting permissions accordingly. Uh, next, I define the admin machine. So I'm working on the admin, admin machine here. Uh, admin holds the DNS services. It used to be that uh, log.org.uk was um, a virtual machine running Zen KVM. Um, and then we were very generously loaned or um, sponsored by Bitfolk. And so Bitfolk host um, all of the different virtual machines we had on one host. They've split it across various different machines. So whereas we used to have stuff like NetJOS running on here, we used to have backup scripts and all those sorts of fun things. Um, most of that stuff's been picked up by um, uh, Bitfolk for us, so that's fab. Uh, but so as a result, uh, admin is now kind of badly named because it should really be called DNS or something fun like that. Um, this line here basically means that I can connect direct to this virtual machine. Not too relevant for this build, but uh, as and when I start working with this machine talking to other boxes, that's when it become a bit more relevant. Uh, this line is more vanity than anything else uh, because basically it says VirtualBox knows this machine and it's called admin. Uh, oh. I might have a viewer, or is that me? I can't tell. Uh, let me just try in here. Let's do that. No, it is just me. Don't. Oh, I still need to get my head around how this uh, how this Twitch stuff works. Never mind. Um, right. So next we have a shell script, and this shell script uh, basically installs Ansible. So if we don't have Ansible installed, uh, check and see if pip is installed. If we don't have pip installed, uh, then apt update, apt install Python pip and curl. So that's what that is that's up there. Uh, and then we have pip3 install, we upgrade minus r, and then this requirements file. So let's quickly pop open that requirements file. Do, 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 do. Requirements. Uh, so in requirements, we have uh, Ansible equals 2.10.3. Uh, so as of a few days ago, that's been bumped to 2.10.4 as the most recent version. Um, I don't really need 2.10.4 right now, uh, and probably we should change that to being 2.10.4, but we'll get back to that one later. And net address or net ADDR. Uh, 0.8.0. Uh, I don't know what the latest version is of that. Um, again, I should probably just remove the equals equals. Um, it's good practice when you're working with Ansible uh, to make sure that you uh, test your script against one set of pip libraries um, and then rolling manage them as you go along. Uh, so when you move up from say 2.10.2 to 2.10.3, um, when you run your uh, Ansible install, at that point, just to check and make sure your libraries have caught up. Uh, I would say, I, you know, um, <laughs> it's not a disaster, but again, you know, not a disaster. Anyway, so uh, this this line here installs um, with pip, which is the Python package manager, uh, those two packages from the requirements. And if I needed to add any more, I would just stick more of the Ansible requirements into here. So like, for example, when I start working with, say for example, um, the um, web server or the mail server or the mailing list server, when I hit start hitting those boxes, if I want to um, start doing things like um, adding extra libraries, so I'm using the net address one because that allows me to do things like um, DNS resolution and stuff like that, uh, then those requirements, uh, I can add extra libraries into there. Or if we suddenly started out of the blue, running OpenStack or um, running Kubernetes or Docker or things like that in these hosts, in this host, which we might get to eventually, I don't know, um, then that would all end up being extra libraries to include in that requirements file. 
uh, if we don't have that, that requirements file, just pip install Ansible. So this has come from kind of a boilerplate that I have for stuff that I do uh, in Vagrant. I haven't done an awful lot of stuff in Vagrant in the last year or so, um, but this is one that's been kind of knocking around for uh, quite a while uh, as a script that's in the back of my head that needs to be written. As I said, we had a problem with DNS earlier this year, so not great, but we'll see. Okay, so once we've installed Ansible, um, we just check with Ansible what version it is. So pip freeze uh, asks the Python package library what version everything is. Uh, and then we're sending the error text to null because we don't need it. Uh, we're grepping Ansible equals. Uh, and then let me just move this because this is starting to really bug me. I'm going to pop that out of there, pop that into here. Hopefully I've not lost my audio because that would be really annoying. Come on, in you go. Let's give it a second to pop back up. Excellent, right. Um, so yeah, so pip freeze, uh, we look for the line ansible equals. Uh, we use the cut command, which um, splits strings on a delimiter, so here's my house our delimiter, minus D, uh, so we're splitting on the equal symbol. So in this requirements file here, this kind of looks like what the pip freeze command looks like. So ansible equals equals 2.10.3. So when we when we use this cut command, um, we cut on every equals sign. So remember it was ansible equals equals 2.10.3. So if I'd have done uh, field one, that would have said ansible. Two is the in between the two equal signs. And then three is the one after the equal signs. Um, using this format here, dollar equal, sorry, dollar bracket, close bracket, uh, rather than what, so sometimes what you'll see is that dollar bracket and that bracket on the end there replaced with back ticks like this. Um, the problem with using back ticks is it's really hard to figure out where lines are delimited, where these uh, commands, these nested commands are delimited. Um, so we use the dollar bracket to um, do a string replacement uh, instead of using the, the back ticks. It just basically makes it a bit easier for the brain to pass, for, for bash to pass it. Uh, and we assign the value from this command where we're saying we want to find out what version Ansible we're running, we stick it into this Ansible version here. So this thing that's down here still hasn't got to that point yet, which is a bit annoying. Uh, it's not even that the CPU is maxing up, it's a bit random. Uh, I wonder what it's choking on. Ah. actually the combination of Firefox and OBS, so that's not good. I think I'm going to need to get off that. Oh, well, if somebody turns up in the chat, please see if somebody turns up in the stream, rather, please feel free to uh, to say hi in the chat. Uh, and then I will... There's not even anything I can do about it. I'll have to come back to that later. Um, right, so what happens next? Um, really find out what's happening with that we'll come back to that in a minute right okay so um, after we have um, this Hansible version here um, we check in a slash vagrant dot vagrant slash machines so I mentioned before about this drive mapping thing um, when you vagrant up a box uh, it maps the, the directory you're in to slash vagrant. So this is the directory I'm in here. Ta-da. Um, and here is the dot vagrant directory. And inside dot vagrant is machines. And inside machines is a file called private. This is a file called admin because that's the machine I'm on. Then a folder called, sorry, a directory called admin, a directory called virtual box, because this is the virtual box um, virtual machine. And in there you've got the private key for this 
machine. So for each of those private keys, we want to copy, well, we want to run this script here, uh, Vagrant Populate Machines. So let's quickly pop open Populate Machines. So what is this doing? Well, it is literally just copying the source to the destination. Fantastic. That's a bit random. Uh, why did I do that then? I can't remember. I don't know what that's doing now. Oh well, I'm going to take this off because it's not doing me any benefit whatsoever. Right. So yeah, so this copies the machine keys into um, the destination. So what's the destination? We have said copy the machine key that we find using this find statement. So it looks in that path and finds that key and copy it to etc. Ansible keys. Seems relatively sensible. Uh, and then we churn that directory, Ansible keys, we chmod the directory, we chmod the, so the files, we chmod the file, there, the keys, all look good. If we haven't got an Ansible CFG, get it. This is where that Ansible version came from before. So we're looking for this uh, file here, Ansible version examples, Ansible.cfg, stick it out into Ansible.cfg, all good. And then we chmod it. So that means that only root can change it with those permissions because it's owned by root because this whole script is being run by root. Uh, and then we run ansible localhost minus m line in file. So what this does, what you might sometimes see, particularly in bash scripts, uh, is a sed or an awk command. What does sed and awk do? Right, um, so sed and awk are um, scripting tools for uh, processing text. Um, uh, so you can do commands like um, uh, look for a string, replace said string with another string, or um, uh, uh, look for lines that match this and delete them, or uh, duplicate this character, or replace any of this character with another character. Anyway, you can do lots of things like that. Um, I'm actually using the built-in Ansible um, tools that do something slightly similar uh, because I want this line in file uh, module. And that literally does what it says on the tin. If there's not a line, sorry, I want this line here, host underscore key underscore checking equals false. If that line doesn't exist, sorry, I want that line to exist. What it will do though, is it will look for this regular expression. So it's saying, if there is a line that starts with no spaces, it goes straight into this hash symbol, which is a comment character in the file we're looking at here, um, or it doesn't contain that hash symbol. So it just goes line, possible hash, possible not hash, um, host key checking, and then dot stands for any character, anything after that point. Uh, then we're going to replace whatever that line there was with this line. Uh, and that is going to be in this file, etc. Ansible, Ansible, the CFG. Uh, I also need to do the same thing with SSH args. So SSH args is going to have this great big long line here. Identities only, user host file, user known host file, control persist, all those sorts of fun things. Um, so that's going to update this at this system-wide Ansible config file. After that, um, if there doesn't already exist an Ansible hosts file, create an Ansible hosts file. So the first one is going to be admin, and we say Ansible connection local. That seems fair to me. Uh, so Ansible has a series of connection plugins. Local literally just work on the, against my local machine, um, uh, and use the currently 
executing user as the user to make these commands for me. Um, what we can then do, because because of those um, host IPs that we actually issued before, we can actually replace the hosts file. We can tell it not to do DNS lookups for these host names that we're going to put in here in a second, but instead use the host name and tell it the IP address that it wants to connect to and the Ansible user to use to connect to it. All good again. And then again, we mark this file read only for, sorry, read only for all users, uh, but read write for the real user. We're then going to chown, which means uh, change the ownership to uh, the root user, but the vagrant group uh, for etc. Ansible. Right, so up until this point, all fairly standard stuff that you might do with Ansible. This bit's a bit more of a tweak for uh, the fact we're using Vagrant. So I'm going to use bind fs. And effectively what that does is that remounts part of your file system into another part of your file system, but change permissions. Uh, and I am using um, a systemd mount um, instruction. Uh, and effectively that's because if you try and, uh, so a lot of the instructions you see will say use um, systemd, uh, sorry, use uh, the fs tab file for bindfs or for lots of different fuse modules. Um, but there, if you use that, what happens is that um, systemd reads that fs tab file and tries to mount everything inside there. But it's a bit opinionated, surprise, surprise, when it comes to systemd. So if there are certain flags that it doesn't spot, it will just assume that you want it to include those anyway. <clears throat> and the most recent bindfs that is in uh, Debian Buster conflicts with what system D wants. So instead we're just going straight for the native system D mount file. Uh, and then we tell it, by the way, can you go away and mount that file for me? So this is still installing Ansible. It's nearly done though, I think. I don't think we've got much further to go. So what's it gonna do once that's done? Well, the rest of this file is currently commented out because I wanted to actually manually execute the command that it was gonna do. Uh, but normally it would be executing etc. Ansible install site. Where does that actually come from? Well, that bindfs that we mount, that we uh, we used before, which is here, says mount vagrant ansible, so this ansible directory here, into etc. ansible install. So it's saying run this site.yaml file with no limit, or limit to the all group, which is basically everything, <clears throat> um, and execute it with the playbook command user bin sudo, user local bin ansible dash playbook. So the pip install or pip3 install of ansible puts uh, ansible playbook into user local bin. Uh, and just to make sure we don't hit any path problems, I'm telling sudo to run user local bin, or at least I would be. Currently don't have any vault PW, uh, any um, Vault, the Ansible Vault encrypted files. So what you can do with Ansible Vault is actually encrypt files to um, to a string, uh, and you can include that string in that directory. Uh, what I have done in the past uh, is added into this um, directory here the Vault password for my local development, and added that Vault password file to the git ignore. So how does that work? Well, what that means is that um, anyone that I share this to, so for example, in here, I've got a load of um, uh, email addresses and stuff like that, which I'm not gonna open up because it's got pe people's proper email addresses. Um, but um, I can use Ansible Vault to encrypt this file and this file as well, the admin, that one's not too, too critical at the moment. But this email address is one, for example, I can encrypt that file um, with this vault password file. And this vault password file can either be um, a executable file, 
um, in which case the output of that um, file must be the password that Ansible Vault is going to use, uh, or it can just be a string, uh, a, a, a non-executable file, which returns the string, or which has got the string in it that you wanted to encrypt it with. So you could do things like um, uh, encrypt your um, vault file against the SSH key that you're copying in there, for example. So then you have to decrypt it with the SSH key, things like that. It's not what we're doing in this case, but it's something you could do. Uh, you can also do things like you can use um, uh, HashiCorp's vault as a way of encrypting strings. You can use GPG as a way of encrypting strings. There's lots of different ways you can cut that one. Again, we're not doing any of that, but. Um, and then we're saying to look for the list of hosts that this limit command acts against, look in etc. Ansible hosts. Well, Ansible hosts was what was generated here, which currently just says admin, Ansible connection, local, um, and might also include things like mailman, uh, web01, um, mailin01, whatever. But we'll get to those ones later, but that's what that, that host file is there for. So it's gonna run this site file. So let's close that. In fact, let's close all of these. And pop open the site.yaml. So, at the moment, this site.yaml contains a single instruction which is on the host, on the admin host, execute the role log org UK dot bind. So let's have a quick look at what that means. Um, so log org UK bind is a file uh, which lives under roles. Uh, and the reason we know that works collections doesn't matter right here we go here's so it's we've told the ansible config file that lives in the same path as this that roles live in dot roles or tilde slash so home directory dot ansible slash roles or in user share ansible roles or in etc ansible roles so in theory we could copy this role into etc ansible roles if we wanted to this way feels a bit neat to me um, because you keep kind of keeping everything to do with your playbook in one place. Uh, now what you can do, and I think might even be in, might have even been done in this case. In fact, let's have a quick pop into this. <coughs> nope. Um, so what you can do with it is you can have this in a um, sub module. So I've seen this sometimes where um, this role is a sub module in your Git repository. So you can be developing in your submodule separate to your playbook and then check out to a specific tag or a specific re-release or whatever. Um, and then add that new checked out location to your version tree. So that when the next person comes to it, they may see there's a master branch or whatever, but you're actually just working to this particular tagged release. Um, inside this log org uk uh, dot bind uh, is a directory called tasks and in tasks is a file called main.yaml and this is where the bulk of the work is going to happen as far as um, this role is concerned so the first thing it's going to do uh, we're running on Debian so we use the apt command uh, to install packages so we are using the apt instruction to install bind 9 we're saying that must be present After that, we say install named.conf.local into etc. bind. So let's go and find that file. Well, that is a template file because it's a template instruction. So we go into templates and in there is named.conf.local.j2. So this is a file that says these are the local things that are in this machine's um, 
bind the cache. Um, please compile this ginger string, this ginger template into that file. Um, and I'll pick apart how that works in a minute. But um, so it says compile this template into this path here. And really what we need to do is notify, bind that at that point that it needs to reload. So let's stick that into there. Uh, and I'm going to do the same there. Right. So what's this saying? So um, when uh, when an Ansible task executes, what it does is it sets one of three conditions. It either says it has succeeded OK. In other words, no changes have been made. It has succeeded and made a change, um, or it has failed. Uh, there's also this when command, which is where have we got when? Oh, I don't think we've got when here. That's annoying. Uh, there's also a when statement, uh, which says you can skip uh, an action uh, if it doesn't meet these criteria. So you could say, for example, um, when HA master is true, for example, or um, when this value is present in this um, variable. These are fairly common statements to make. So yeah, so those those conditions are set. So if if um, the uh, result from this module is changed, this notify flag is, is set. At the end of a play, so this uh, site.yaml file. So anything where it starts like this, where it goes hosts and then a string, that's classed as a play. So when it reaches the end of this play, any handlers have been notified. I'll come to what the handler is in a second. Any of these handlers that have been notified uh, that they they need to be executed will trigger, and they'll trigger in the order that it's in the handlers file. So let's go into handlers, and here's our handler file. So this is saying tell system B to reload bind nine service. That's fairly straightforward. Um, so that um, handler only executes at the end of that play, or there's also a meta task, uh, a, a, an instruction you can issue to say, flush your handlers. So if you got halfway through this and you wanted to say, um, just on the off chance that system D, uh, that bind needs reloading, reload bind, for example, you can say, flush all of your handlers all at once. We're not doing that in this, but you can do that. Uh, so this file here is a ginger file. So let me just crack open this ginger file. Uh, and ginger is J-I-N-J-A too, like ninja, but with a J. Um, and it uses two constructs for this. This means uh, insert at this point, the value of this variable. Um, so you will commonly see this like in standard like this so zone quotes bracket bracket item bracket bracket close quotes so that means uh, write the word zone quotes and then whatever the is the value of this item value is that uh, variable is the other instruction that you'll see is uh, open bracket open curled brackets rather uh, percent sign uh, and I should note this one here as well was uh, curl braces as well. So open curl brace percent for thing in another thing. So that's a for loop. And a for loop basically says, um, if you've got a, a collection of data, we call that um, an array uh, or a list in Python, um, for every item in that list, copy that, so if you imagine you've got one, two, uh, in fact, let's, let's create ourselves a list. Um, so 
here is our list. Our list is um, uh, George. John, Paul, Ringo. So if you do a, um, let's call this in Beatles. Right. So if you do for Beatle in Beatles, um, then what will happen is it will go through the loop and it will say copy um, from uh, the first string which is George into Beetle then run these instructions so let's say uh, print So then we go back to the, to the top there and it says copy John into Beetle. Then run, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So it was set through that list. Um, if you have, um, so that's a list. Uh, and a list is effectively just a, a series of statements one after the other. Um, The other primary data type you'll tend to see in Python uh, that is comparable to a list is a dictionary. Um, and if you um, if you know PHP as a programming language, for example, uh, you might know that's an array. Uh, so an array, let's draw up an array. Um, so uh, yeah, so let's call it beta again. Equals. And we're going to change that to this curled braces one, and that means dictionary. So John uh, is um, uh, so what you'll typically see at that point is um, another dictionary inside there of stuff. Um, so you might see singer. Uh, you might see uh, brighter true you might see um, drummer false sake of argument and then you'll see oh singer true Um, right, so we've got our data here. So, like with the last one, we can iterate over that list of um, things by saying for Beetle in Beetles. Now, a slight difference from regular Python at this point in that in regular Python, you might do for uh, Beetle name uh, Beetle role in Beatles.item like that. Uh, what you do instead in Ansible is you say for Beetle in Beatles and you say convert that dictionary 
to item it. And then what you do, so what that does is it says convert Beatles um, into a list. So that list looks more like this. Um, key. John. Value. And then these values up here. For sake of argument. Let me just copy that. And it will then, I'll just do that's just a little bit easier to read. So now we can now say comma there, and the next one will be key. Uh, pop. And so on and so forth, Paul, George, Ringo, whatever. And then once we've done that, we then say for Beetle in. List. Uh, so then we'll do our print uh, beetle dot key. Uh, print beetle dot value dot singer. So we're saying this beetle is the content of that first value there, and then is the content of that value there and is in the content of that value there. Um, now this currently says print beetle.value.singer here which is great if you've got um, if you this value singer exists but if you notice Ringo and George don't have singer there so this will actually error at that point so what instead you would do is you do default because it's not a singer, or a singer doesn't exist. And you might have, um, you know, if beetle.value.drama default false, then, so this whole statement here is evaluated. So what it says is, if we've got this value, beat or value drummer set, then use the value that it's set. If it isn't set, use this default here, which in this case is the Boolean, the true or false, of false. So we're saying if beat or value drummer is true, then print he's a drummer, for example. Um, you could also say if um, singer is defined, then print singer. Singer. Um, so this little tilde symbol here, um, which on British keyboards is above the hash symbol, that uh, just means join these two strings together. Um, but this is a Boolean, so we're going to struggle with that one. 
So what we need to do is we need to say, turn that into a string like that. So again, that turns this into an evaluated value. And again, we turn this here into an evaluated statement. Right, so anyway, I've gone over the, that file format bit there as well. Blimey, I can't believe Ansible's still running. That has taken its proper time. Uh, so yeah, so we see this for server in item.value dict to items. Uh, item has come from this bind copies. I wonder where that bind copies has come from. So let us have a look and see if we can find where that bind copies has come from. Well, actually, if I remember rightly, bind copies is in here. Yes, bind copies. So let me pop that over there. And on this side, let's pop that back open. Stick that there. So here's what's happening here. For item in bind copies. So we're copying one by one. So this is um, this is the dictionary format. So this is so this is um, the key called bind copies with the values of everything under here. So the first so if we can we can convert that as it stands to being bind copies equals bit folk. And the first key in that is a dot which in turn is another dictionary, but that is not a dictionary of dictionaries. Sorry, it's not a dictionary, it's a list rather. So that has then got these two IP addresses. One's an IPv4, one's an IPv6. So let's just paste that into there for a moment. Fix it up. So that's the nesting of this bind copies file here. And so we then got the same with B and C. So for item in bind copies, so item is now this bundle of data here. And we've told it if bind copies doesn't exist for whatever reason, turn bind copies into a so replace bind copies with this default of an empty dictionary but then tell it it's a list it's a knife it's a dictionary of turn the dictionary into items so we can use it in this for loop so this all here comes for item in this list here so item is bit of folk ns so it's key so that dict to items turns this into Key bit of folk ns value is this thing here, and this then turns from being a dictionary into being a list. Hopefully, so far, kind of making some sense. install is still going on. Goodness me, that has taken its time, hasn't it? Right. So what's going on here at the moment? It's still setting up and small. So yeah, so, uh, so item is now this, 
So if item.value, which again it defaults to a dictionary, is empty, so it's not empty, that write the line ACL item.key, so bitfocus, ACL bitfocus, and then we're then saying for each value in that dictionary there, so this here, which again is a dictionary, so yep, so each of those put server.key, so we're going to write a.authns.bitfocus.com and then loop over the IPs in server.value. So we're now looking at this here. So what's going to happen is it's going to loop over this dictionary, this um, list. So it's going to do an IP of this IPv6 address and then this IPv4 address. So then it will create another line which says slash slash server of b.authns.bitfolk.com which has got these two IPs and then c.authns.bitfolk.com and these two IPs. So we're going to end up with six IP addresses in this ACL. Uh, and then we have to close all these four loops. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Close that file. It's going to moan because I've made changes. I'm not changing, saving loads of changes. So after that, we're saying loop through the DNS suffixes. There's two of those. One is log.org.uk. Or is there? Is there more than that? Let's have a quick mother looking at vast bar DNS. Suffixes, where's the DNS suffixes come from? I don't know. Mm, that's no good. DNS suffixes, not you. Mm. Or have I put it in there? Merge data. Where have I defined what DNS suffix it says? DNS suffix. That's what DNS suffix is, right? That would help, wouldn't it? Maybe I actually just don't define it anywhere. That would be very foolish of me, wouldn't it? Let's come back to here a second. I need to look into that one. Okay, anyway, we'll come back to that in a bit. So I'm not going to 
horse through this one too much now because there's clearly some problems in this one. Uh, but the last, no, there is a thing here I need to look at. When is it gone? Have somebody interacting in the chat at least so hello person who's interacting in the chat it's a shame you uh, you've been caught up by the bot if you want to talk to me specifically about something that's in here just uh, just let me know what that link was about that'd be uh, be quite nice um right then do we need to look at um <clears throat> ah maybe it's supposed to be this maybe it's just supposed to be dns not dns suffixes so let's come back and have a look at this Vitamin DB value. Four item bind copies. So let's have a, another look in that DNS one. DB in DNS suffixes. So DB dot key my dog and K. That's valid. There's no suffix there. That then is item in bind copies. Ah so yeah, maybe that is. Oh boy. So it's not DNS then, is it? I wonder if that is supposed to be. DNS. We then say no, it can't be.
So yes, yeah, so there should be a thing here called DNS services, uh, suffixes. finished now which is good vagrant ssh admin come back to that in a second all right so love of the uk um which is a list of dns names so it's going to be love of the uk love of the uk build me a suffix key of log.org.uk with then those three items log.org.uk zone type master file the key allow transfer to bind copy no So I think this actually needs to be uh, UK is going to be uh, suffixes um, name. Then we want to say find copies. Find copies. So then names. So this then gives me some flexibility later on to be able to say actually no, don't say find copies there because we want to be able to overload that so bind copies which is a default of So you see there how we nested these two default values. So we've said, um, if we've specified in this DNS suffixes uh, a bind copies value, then use it. If we don't, use the global bind copies. So this means as long as we generally trust those, we can use those. But if we've not even got that file, that variable in there, then 
and default to an empty string. Fab. Right, okay. So finish with that one, finish with that one. What do I want to do now? Item. Ah. No, that's not going to work, is it? If item bind the copy So default by copies, it's a dictionary, it's gonna be a dictionary, so it's got to be I think I need to have a quick pop into my sources. Source admin etc bind names.conf.local so this is my original. Blah, 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 blah. Right. So it is done. Ah, oh, it's done to the ACL. Aha, right, okay. So. If I to in blind copies. So yes, yeah, so it's the ACL list. So, bind copy dot king. That's what I want. Uh, so yeah. So my if is right. If bind copy default an empty set is an empty set. So it's not an empty set. I'm going to make it that value. End if end for allow update none. How does that compare to that one? IPv6. Right. So we are now at a point where we can create that names.conf.local. So sudo minus i become root. C etc. Ansible install. Ansible playbook. What is this doing now? This has, or it will, open up this host, this site file. It will include this role. It will go away and it will ask for this main file to be done here. So the very first thing I expect it to do is actually go away and create, install rather, bind mind or yell, uh, bind mind. Right, whilst that's carrying on, let's have a look. So. Has the done the end of the zone loads. Next, we need to do a reverse IPv6 DNS. Uh, right, that is all a bit messy, but what that's basically doing is it's pulling the IP address out of our. IPv6 addresses. So, if 
Four item in VM detail. Let's have a look at VM detail. Okay. New. Okay. do here so this is not going to be right at the moment in fact it might even break that except I've got a default so it's going to try and do the IPv6 it will say reverse IPv6 detail DNS and then we'll have no values in there Oh, how very frustrating. Uh, okay, so for item in hosts, so that's fair enough. Item in hosts. Can I call it host? Yes. If That's the item dot key. Yeah. If item dot value dot v six is defined, uh, set namespace equals name. Sorry, ns equals namespace of that size there, IPv6 blocks. So IPv6 blocks equals item.value.v6 using the IP address network function to split on the colon that is right I guess because we're turning it back to front because it's the yes oh my goodness right so let's have another look at this names.conf.local so here we go this is the admin one so what you'll notice here is that here we have the zone we want to look at um, and it's going to start here so it goes c8 0f 1f 1 and then because it's not four um, hex values in there that's an extra zero. So we go uh, C eight zero F one F one zero That is very broken, isn't it? We'll come back to that in a second. At least Ansible's actually blooming running now, which is a bit tricky. Right, okay. So. Ah, but it did install named.conf.local into etc. Bind. So let's have a look at named.conf.local. So, etc. Bind. names.conf.local What have we got here? 
So I was right, it did get as far as the IPv6 and then fail. Uh, what are we missing from in here? Oops, too far. So. That's a bit I've missed. Let's uh, populate that into there. Up near the top. All right, so let's come back down here. So. Four item in hosts. Here's our hosts. Set namespace. It's namespace IPv6 block. So let's just pop that across there. I don't think we don't have it quite that wide, do we? <sighs> if item.value.v6 is defined, which it is, for set IPv6 blocks. Split by the colon. Ah, right, okay. We just want the network address. So the network address is everything to there, excluding that bit. So that's good. So, for IPv6 block, in IPv6 blocks, set block equals IPv6 block string. So, it's now splitting each of these blocks into the strings. Set IPv6 block equals IPv6 block by which is string. So it's making sure that that value that's come out of there is a string. Works. If IPv6 block length is three characters, so that's for this one here, for example, then add a zero. To the beginning of it. Ah, so it's creating a string from that. Okay. So IPv6 block equals blah 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 blah. I think that works now. Item dot key. It's not item dot value dot key. It's item dot key. So it's db dot admin. So let's see where. So I'm happy with that. Let's rerun that playbook, etc. Ansible install site.yaml. So Ansible's going to check and see whether that bind is installed. First of all, whenever it gets around to it. Give any priority to one running here. Perhaps demise the priority of something else. Mm. Not really. The process is now it spins up. What a lot of stuff Firefox has running.
give this box a bit more RAM. Or actually run it in the cloud like I was in, supposed to have done in the first place and didn't manage it. Let's kill that one off because I don't need that running there. Hopefully that might give it a bit of an oomph. It's definitely freed some RAM up. That's good. Right, so we know that's going to break anyway, so let's just control C that there. Uh, and cat names.conf.local. Excellent, so we now have our names.conf for our IPv6 stuff. Has that matched up to that? C8-0F10A-B-01002.ipv6.io at Arthur rather. Type master file etc. Find reverse. AV to have and blah blah blah. Where's SNM? SNM. 570F1 F1 O eight AB O one zero zero two. Yep, SNM is fine. Web O one. It's a different file, but that's okay. Mailman, that's a one nine oh F. One F one O A A B O one F one F one Oh yeah, of course duh. Right, okay, so uh, and we've got our stuff there, so let's let's just check that once more time. So Include blah 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 logging blah 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 blah. We copied that straight in, that's fine. ACL big photo and S IP 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 IP. Yeah, all good. Suffix there. Oops, all good. Okay. Zone names. Uh, yeah, that's not come out right. Why is that not come out right? Because what I've done is just said the name word names. Lovely. Right then, so suffix log the old leaker, that's fine. For item in DB value oh, names. That's what I should be saying. So yeah, so that is a list. So yes, yeah, so it's just a list. It's not a dictionary. I find that. So for item in DB the value dot names default to a list. That's a list. Zone item blah file blah blah blah. For Find copy in DB value find copy. Yeah. Okay. So that should make sense. Now let's rerun that.
I'm going to give this stream to the end of this play to run. And then I'm going to finish up because it's really rather late here where I live. Uh, so, with any luck, this is just going to work. It's going to look awesome. So, play runs. Let's have a look at the play. Gathering facts, yes, yes, we're only gathering facts. I thought I'd turn the deprecation warnings off, maybe I haven't. to fix that one but that's not going to be something for tonight I think so let's have one last look at names dot blah 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 right so here we go name so so not dot uk etc find db dot dot uk fine and I'll transfer a bit of folk NS. No update none. Glugs. Dblug.org. Okay. Glug. Glug.org. Okay. Oddcamp.org. Oddcamp.com. Oddcamp.net. Oddcamp.camp. Fab. Let me jump down to the reverse. IPv6 which we checked out as well, so that's all good. So let's close that one off, close that one off, come back to here and say that we have to do, got to here to valid comparison with rob.uk. So, when I now, next I open up this file, I'll go, ha ha, I have got to here, and it was fine before then. I'm not fine after then. Okay. So, with that, thank you very much for listening, watching, following along, getting very frustrated with me, I'm sure. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.